We're just about ready to begin animating. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the control rig we'll work with. The scene is 03 begin. And here it is. The control rig here, I'm really excited about working with simply because there are some extra features added to help us preserve volume. So you can see as we start to move the hand, how the forearm will twist naturally. And what this does is it uses an IK system tied to the forearm. I'm going to show you this quickly, heading over to layers and showing objects to hide. So if I were to go to wireframe mode here, what you see is that we have a bone here that's simply used to gather the twist data we need to plug into our forearm twist objects. And then we have a swivel control that's parented directly to the arm control so that no matter how the arm moves, that swivel control will follow and turn twisting the forearm bone. Again, so we can plug that data into our twist bones. So I find that that works very well. And it's a similar story for the upper arm, only we gather the twist from the upper arm instead of using an IK system. You'll find the same type of rig for the, the ankle. So notice as we go in and start to, to twist this, again the volume holds, and then we can go in and also move the knee, and that will in turn help us to get some very nice twist distribution. Also that we can work comfortably without having to worry if our rig can withstand the, the pressures of a complex animation. We will, we will be creating a rather stylized animation, so we just want to make sure that we can animate with confidence. All right, so same thing goes for the, the torso. You can see that we have this advanced twisting spine. We've also added a back control here in case we need to get some more curvature to push the, the line of action. So those are some things I wanted to point out that and working with suitable axis orders. So you'll see that with the rotate manipulator, I'm actually in the gimbal coordinate system. I like to use this when I can simply because that helps us to keep track of what axis we're truly animating in. So when we start to take a look at our our F curves, we know exactly what needs to be tweaked. So I find that if you choose a, a good axis order, that will help you to prevent gimbal lock and it will also help you to clean up animation a lot faster. So in this case, if we were to head over to the motion panel for the character's arms, I'm using an axis order of XYZ. However, we may consider changing this to something that will help us to not get this. You can see we're running into gimbal lock very quickly when the wrist rotates down. So in this case, we may consider using an axis order of Z, X, Y. That way, Y axis is the main driver. Let's go ahead and take a look. Again, I'll switch this to Z, X, Y. So you can see as we start to rotate this down, notice the Y axis being the main driver will allow us to comfortably animate in the other axes. Beautiful. That doesn't mean that we can just go in and, and quickly pose our character's hand. We still need to be, be very careful how we rotate just to make sure everything holds conveniently. All right, so just wanted to point that out. The torso controls work the same way. Notice I've changed the axis order here to Z, Y, X. But it really is a matter of what works best for your animation. There is no set axis order. All right, great. Well, at that point, again, once we're familiar with our control rig, we can then jump right in and start to, to build our performance, which we will do in the next lesson.